In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple and quick technique to get a pure white background for portraits or product shots. It requires minimal gear, it's portable, and you can use it in tight spaces. And I'll even show you an easy way to get perfect exposure on the background and your subject without a light meter. Stay tuned. Hey gang, I love white backgrounds for portraits and headshots and beauty shots. Now I'll admit, when I was younger, I hated white backdrops. I thought they were boring and old fashioned and not at all creative. As I matured as a photographer, I realized that the real reason I hated white backdrops was because they were pure, a blank canvas if you will. And that meant that I had to do amazing things with my subject in front of the camera. That is where my appreciation for psychology and its impact on great photography got started. The lighting challenge with a white background is that if you put your subject directly in front of the white backdrop, it won't be recorded as pure white because it's being lit by the same light as your subject. And since you're going to expose for your subject and the background is behind your subject, the inverse square law causes the white background to begin to look gray. So in order to keep it white, I mean really white, we have to light it. Now if you have a dedicated studio space like this, it's easy enough to mount two strobes, one on either side, in this case, Paul C. Buff DigiB DB800s, and you can have an evenly lit nine foot wide white backdrop. And that accords is much more than you need for a portrait, and that doesn't help you much if you shoot portraits in your home or on location. The good news is that you have options for location work and shooting in tight spaces. You can find a white wall, or you can purchase a set of background stands and white seamless paper in the 53 inch rolls. But then you still need to dedicate two lights to lighting the white background to make sure that it's evenly lit. You can try and get away with one light for the background, but if you're in a tight space, you probably won't be able to get enough distance between the light and the background to get even coverage. So you'll wind up with a gradient from the light fall off like you see here, which by the way is a nice lighting effect for some portraits, but we're talking about pure white in this video. My solution is very simple. I use a medium Photoflex white octodome. This gives me a nice big background that allows me to comfortably shoot vertical or horizontal portraits and headshots, and even do some shots cropped from the waist up. Now a big bonus to the Photoflex octodome is the fact that they are only 16 inches deep, which really helps out if you're working in a tight space. The medium octodome is 55 inches in diameter and weighs only four pounds, so you don't need a heavy duty stand to hold it if you're shooting indoors. You can see here that I have my subject placed just in front of the medium octodome, and I'm using an inexpensive shoot through Brawley umbrella as my main light on camera left. I have a Paul C. Buff Digibee DB800 in each of the modifiers, and I get a result like this with just two lights. If I add a simple Walmart reflector on camera right, I can go from this to this with a little fill from the reflector. Now I know for some of you, the 55 inch octodome is going to be too big for the space that you have to work in. You can still make this technique work with a smaller modifier. Just to prove the point, here's a portrait that I shot using a Photoflex medium sized softbox that is 24 inches by 32 inches and 17 inches deep as my background, and a simple shoot through umbrella as my main light. I did this setup in a kitchen with very little space. Both modifiers have one LumaPro 180R speed light as the light source. Now remember that great photography requires great problem solving. And while the smaller softbox is a bit limiting compared to the bigger octodome, you can still do some very nice work with it. Now I promised you that I would show you an easy way to get the perfect exposure for this setup without a light meter. So let's break this down. We know that we want the background to be pure white. And I like to shoot my studio portraits at an aperture between f5.6 to f8. There's very little value to shooting wide open with this kind of background because there's no bokeh or detail in the background. So it makes more sense to go with a nice sharp aperture that will give you plenty of depth of field to keep both eyes in focus if you turn your subject's face. You can see here I have my medium octodome set up and I have my aperture set to f6.3. My ISO is 64, which is the base ISO for my camera and my shutter speed is 1 200th of a second. With the camera settings established in advance, I'm going to turn my DigiB DB800, which is a 320 watt second strobe, up to full power, and then take a test shot. When I preview the frame, I want to be sure that I have the image highlights feature turned on. The technical term for this, the blinky feature. 
And what it does is blink in all the areas that are completely blown out and not recording any detail. Depending on your camera brand and model, you'll usually find this feature in either the histogram or display settings. Check your manual to be sure. If the entire frame is blinking, I'll turn the strobe down by one full stop and take another test shot. If everything is still blinking, I'll turn the strobe down by another full stop and test again. I'll repeat this until I get the first frame where parts of the background aren't blinking. Then I'll go back to my strobe, turn it up to the previous setting, and now I have a pure white, evenly lit background that is no brighter than necessary for my f6.3 at ISO 64 setup. Now I'll go ahead and set up my main or key light, which is the shoot through Brawley umbrella, also with a DigiB DB800, and I'll position it on camera left, slightly above my subject and angled down. With the second DigiB set to its lowest power setting, I'll do a test shot and take a look at my LCD preview. Then I'll raise the power by one stop and test again, and repeat the process until I have my subject's face properly exposed. And there you have it, a properly exposed, two light portrait with a pure white background using a 55 inch Photoflex Octodome as the backdrop. Now full disclosure, the shots in this video were the very first time that I used the DigiB 800s, so I wasn't that familiar with their power. It took me about 90 seconds to test and dial in the proper exposure for both strobes using this technique. Once you do this a few times and you're accustomed to your lights and their output, it will take you a fraction of that time to come up with the correct exposure. The key is that I determined what I wanted my exposure to be first. Then I set my lights to meet the needs of those settings. For those of you that may be wondering, why not just dial the background strobe up to full power and let the background blow out? Because of your subject's close proximity to the light source, and because the light that is aiming straight to your camera is much brighter than your chosen exposure requires, you'll begin to get a lot of flare, which will greatly reduce the contrast of your image and just looks sloppy. Now I will give you a fun little trick that I sometimes do with the blown out background. You can see here that I have my subject in front of the Octodome and the DB800, which is set at full power. I switched to a 50 millimeter lens on my full frame Nikon DA10 so that I can get closer to my subject. Now remember, shooting a portrait with a 50 millimeter lens, you don't want to get too close, otherwise you risk distortion in the face. I then took one of my Walmart reflectors, the 24 inch by 30 inch phone core, and place the lens face down in the middle of the board. Trace the outline of the lens and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. I slid the foam board over the lens to use it as a reflector and did a backlit portrait like you see here. Now I'm not a big fan of this technique in color, but it looks really cool in black and white. Be forewarned, you will need to increase the contrast in post-production to get the pure blacks in your finished image. So there you have it gang, some space saving and money saving tips for shooting portraits and headshots on a white background. So until next time, go pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking and keep shooting. Adios.